Welcome again to another lecture. Here we're gonna continue where we left. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some installation of this package called Laravel. Um, it's actually Laravel Collective slash HTML, right? So this package, so what is Laravel Collective? And so that is a new community that I think the name was Adam. Uh, and the other one was Tom. So its primary goal is to maintain the core Laravel components that have been de deprecated by the Laravel framework. So uh, the currently they have different packages, but the Laravel Collective is taking over this HTML form here. They do also um, annotations and stuff like that, but we're not gonna. I mean, it, that's not important for us because I want to show you another interesting way how we can create forms. So um, the best way what we we can do this is if we install this package. I think it's version six. So here they updated the regular. I mean, uh, they're trying to update as much as they can. So I hope that in future it will stay like that. Now I'm just gonna pause for a second. I think this takes a while to be installed, so I'll see you soon. And he, here we are again. Um, it took like a half a minute or minute, not sure. So it will depend uh, on your computer. It will depend on the speed, RAM, everything you have. And plus, sometimes, yeah, it can take a while. So it depends on every machine. Now, what you can see here, their discovered package, as I tell you before, they implement this feature. So we don't probably need, we don't need to register anything. Uh, I think we, we can work straight. So if you don't understand what we have done, we have just installed this composer require Laravel. I opened the, this one, the command prompt, and I'm still working on the same project. So I'm still here, um, htdocs intro. Now, after this being done, I can close some of these. I can close this home. I will leave the create because this is where, so find in views, posts, right? In post, create blade. And here, I will show you how now we can use this new syntax. So what we can do is actually we can copy some of the things and after that we can add. Now, how we can open a form and close a form, copy these two things. So we need to tell form starts now and this is how the form should end. All right, so open, and here it will take a couple of things. URL is actually our action, and our action will go, so here it is associative array, that's how it works. So our action will be posts controller, All right? And what we need to do is we need to call some of the methods. Let me just open the post controller here. And for dealing of some of the information, we will use store. When we want to store, um, uh, when we see here is store and newly created resources in storage. So when we want to put something in the database or when we want to do things, we use store. Now, we need just to add this, uh, where is it? Here. We need to just to call the method store. That's pretty much it. Now, how is it this? Before we had to specify action, or we have to specify the URL, but now it's action in the method in the controller. That's so easy. Now, another thing that we can do here, I need to specify the method inside quotes. And this will be post, because we are posting a data. Now, I think we've done here this part. And the next part, what we will do, is I'm going to create a form group here. Oops. And inside this form group, we can just make it indented a little bit more on the right side. Now, what we can do here is how we can um, create a now label. With Laravel Collective, you can create a label just like this. So form. You need to specify form, 
then label and after that inside we need to put the label name it will go for the it this is for title and the second it, it will be the placeholder enter the title or enter title and also here if we want because this is a form group this is a class I mean we can add a class here so if you have your own class custom class you can do it like this class inside of an array like this and inside you can put the name of your class but in but in our case because we're using bootstrap I'm just gonna use control label there is a one for the labels and oops what's happening and I have the other one. I'm just going to copy this one. So this is how the labels are. I mean, uh, you can, this is how you can create the labels. But now we need to put uh, input. For when you put an input, there's different types of input, right? Now we need text here because remember in our, in our database, we do have only for the post, we do have only title, right? So this will be type text. And inside, this will be for title. And the value, you can leave it to empty string or no. Let's see, leave it empty string like this. And you, or you can do it no. But I prefer empty string because we don't, we don't, we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna here, we're not gonna have anything filled. After that, we have the class of form control. instead of form label and it will be form control and here after that we can add multiple we can add placeholder if you want so with the comma we can add more fields called placeholder and the placeholder will be just title and three dots let's just save this one and see if uh, anything is showing up if we do have error here it is enter the title and we do have this input field so if I just inspect the element you will see control uh, you will see label class control label for title and input ID title class form control name title type text value there is no value inside right that's why this is null. So if we if you put something here, it will be there. Now well, one more thing that we need to do, we need to, for example, when we're gonna add the post, we need to submit it somehow. Now after this form group, we can just we can just create form submit and inside you can put the name submit or post submit post or whatever you want here and also I can add the class and the class will have uh, BTN BTN primary or BTN success uh, let's see how it will look and at the end we are closing the form always let's see what's happening here now I have this submit oh yeah it's submit or you can say primary success or BTN block if you want to have uh, from one way to stretch this button from one way to another, you can use BTN block. So I think this is not bad actually, but what we can do, uh, we can put the form inside, inside another call MD6, oops, like keyboard. So I can put the, the entire form inside call MD6. Let's see what's happened. Here it is, and we can put an offset offset of three, and that will shift this one to a little bit on the right side. Now we can enter the title. Let's see if it's responsive. Yeah, it, it looks <laughs> now the offset is uh, <laughs> in a way, but it is what it is. So if you don't want to have it the offset of three, just make it like this, and it will be on that side. Now the form, now our application has its own form which we can we, you don't need to put the offset actually so now we put everything inside the section of the content so the next part is we need to work on this store method 
And this tour method is here. And by the way, if you can see that in our store method, we do have this request, right? And we can work with this request. So we will need to validate the things before that comes from this request here. We need to validate things. For example, I'm just going to show Dan dump here. And I'm just going to do request all or just request. Doesn't matter. It will work. Now, I'm just going to refresh anything you put here, title, for example. If you submit it, it will bring us this, this token. This token has come from CRF uh, protection. And we have this title. Title, right? Now, we're grabbing all of the information from this form that we need with the token as well. Now, but we still need to validate a little bit. So the request will form the information that we are passing from the form. So all the information here, if we have multiple fields, they will be listed here, one, two, three, um, uh, below. So the title, we have the name of the input, and we have the information contained in there, in those input. And this is here, the title for this, sorry, post. And if I submit it again, there it is, the title for this post, is inside stored in the ver in the input called title with the name and ID title. So as you can see, we need to pass this to validation, but we need to create validation rules. So how we can do this, this is very simple in the Laravel. What we can do is we can just grab this request that comes from this here, and uh, we can just comment this here. We don't need that one for now. Now we can use validate method that Laravel provides to us. And inside, we can have array of our rules. So I just want to target the title input. And I will say that, OK, I just want this to be required. Means that, and don't forget always to put a comma here. Doesn't matter if you do don't have any other extra values here. I don't have any body, for example, or I don't know what else it can be there. So you need to put comma here. Now, if I save it, look what will happen. If I save it now, and if I remove everything here, or if I, if I refresh it, so if I try to submit it, it should return me. Here it is. It's a little bit flashing on top, but it's not submitting. But why? Because is that. The title is required. Now, if I do here this die and dump, it will never be executed because die and dump means when it's when you when you reach here, you're not gonna continue to the next, you know, to the next steps. So it's not gonna go to the next step. So if I do it here, it's not it never goes here because this this rule is not passing. So it means that the validation fails. So the proper response is generating some kind of error and it generate actually error arrays error error that's how they call it. error arrays so this array we can access it but i'm gonna we're gonna do it i'm gonna create a partials and put it messages inside and that's how we can see what type of error we have and we can display all of them now what we can do we can pass we can just make more here a little bit things more complicated for example, we can also put that we can put pipe here and say, okay, I just want to, this to be max to be 255 in length. So the maximum length of the input or the string should be 255. Now, one more thing. So if I if I put it here, you're not going to be able to see it, but if I put it like this, it will work. Now, one more thing, we can do achieve the same thing. But we can uh, also, we can put these validation rules in arrays of rules like this. So I'm just going to copy this one. I'm going to put it here. And what I can do, I can say title. Instead of putting pipe between, I can make a here. I will just cut this part. And I will say require as, and the other one will be, the max 255 so if now if i comment this because i do have something here it will should be passed and yeah i should see the same output if i don't have anything this should not allows me to see so this is working now but i do 
prefer this here instead of this but this is when you want to put everything in um, what so if you want to have like um, array of rules so you can say if you want to specify the rules inside array that's very good now uh, I think we're pretty much done here I don't want to go more than this at this lecture it's 15 minutes it's long so what we have done we have used Laravel Collective we install that package you know how to open the form in the form there is an action that needs to specify the method so post control but be careful sometimes if you don't have the method here it will throw an error because it's saying you, you, you you're linking to a method that doesn't exist now also action that doesn't exist sorry the method should be post this is how you put label and this is how you put text i mean input type text and this is how you put a submit button and you at the end you're closing the form here we just grabbing that request we done up we seen what's in that request if we want to val validate things this is how we can validate because here i know that request holds the title here it is if i put it here request holds this title here so i know it should be required and a maximum the maximum length should be 255 characters so you can put here even to be unique when it's saved to the database they will it will check if there is a, for example if you try to save another post with the same name it will throw you an error and say okay in the database you have the, that post right with that with this name so that's pretty much it for this lecture and i hope you enjoyed it we are just starting to shape our application a little bit we create a form we have the links which are working at the moment yeah and the form is working we now next maybe we're going to display the uh, error messages because here there is definitely error but we're not seeing this and that is contained in the error array so thank you very much and see you in the next lecture